welcome back to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. In this episode, we go to an incredible place. One of my favorite national parks. Me too, for sure. There's just something really unique about it. No. Yeah. And we're talking about Bryce Canyon in Utah. It is not really a canyon. It's more like, it's like geologically, there's this giant cliff and then everything kind of just steps down from there and so it's like this overlook but what's really unique about it is there's these pinnacles of red and yellow and orange and white rocks yeah. sticking up everywhere it's just you know evolution not evolution erosion at its finest um you know different sedimental layers eroding at different things at times and it's yeah. just it's really really beautiful really out of this world you know martian landscape again it looks very bizarre yeah um so we started off that morning in the little town of escalante which is within a beautiful drive of escalante yeah. it's route 12 of ut route 12 utah and uh we had a beautiful drive the day before. Escalante is kind of in the middle of that. And then we had the whole of Dixie Forest to ride through on our way to Bryce Canyon. Yeah. I'm gonna put it there, is that all right? Yeah, it's perfect. here over 150 million years ago, during the late Jurassic, you would see a lush forest in front of you. Imagine trees towering over 65 feet high and a forest understory of younger trees, ferns, and cycad-like plants. Rivers meandered lazily over the floodplains and colonies of slender horsetails grew streamside. kind of riding down memory lane if you will and it was you know I was really excited because seven years ago uh you know we were at the same place um and I was I just just flashbacks were just going through my head um and it seven years ago I had surprised Marissa when we pulled into Ruby's Inn in Bryce Canyon oh and yeah a, a little teepee there with a chicken on it or a turkey yeah um, you know, and... I love teepees. I'd stayed in teepees before, and so this was like a really nice surprise of yours. Yeah. Well, seven years ago, I surprised her in the teepee, and this time we just went to reminisce, and we pulled over yeah. at the same teepee, and the colors so cool. were a little bit more faded, but it was the same one. And... Yeah, it was like nothing had changed. Yeah. really 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 cool and uh the road to down bryce canyon national park it's just a one-way ticket to the end of like this plateau um with the erosions and all the cool um structures uh to the left
but it, it kind of dead ends and then you know you turn around and come back the same way I think it's called Rainbow Point at yeah. the very, very end. Like you're just going up and up and up along the cliff edge, basically, until the very edge of that plateau. Yeah, and I just, I really wanted to, to take that ride again. We had an yeah. amazing hike again. We're, we're flashing back to seven years ago. But yeah, yeah like we went down uh, one way and came up through Wall Street from Queens Garden to... To Wall right. Street. Right. So the original thing that we had done seven years ago was just that. Yeah. We went down through Queens Garden and then up through Wall Street. But that was really strenuous. It was a beautiful <laughs> hike, regardless. Um, yeah. But we knew that if we ever did it again, we would do it in reverse. And so now we knew that we wanted to do it in reverse. And the truth of the matter is, is you have to hike down, you know, yeah. the same elevation as you're climbing back up to. But it just Wall Street yeah. is just a zigzag of just insanity. because you go into the canyon and yeah, you're gonna have to come back up at some point yeah. in time. But um, just coming up, you're at high altitude, it's usually quite hot and sunny out there. You feel like you're roasting, you're probably quite thirsty at that Bring point. plenty of water. Yes. And um, trail snacks. <laughs> and trail snacks. Uh, so it can be strenuous coming back up. But yeah, Wall Street is just like zigzags. It's switchbacks, back and forth and back. It's like straight up. Yeah. As 45 much as degree angle is just it, it was pretty miserable yeah. <laughs> the first time we did it yeah. so we decided to do the more gradual uh, Queen's Garden on the way back up and yeah. that was a really good call and again like I, I wrote about it in detail in my little maiden voyage my first book you know and so I've written about it and so I have some of these memories that are stuck in my head and then my writing and then, you know, just pure bliss, this floating cloud of, you know, yeah. of thoughts and, you know, pictures in my mind. But, uh, like, it was almost scene for scene how I remembered it. Like, it was just yeah. awesome. There was, you know, like, there's a tree that kind of grows up in between two cliff faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I don't know how, like, as a seedling, it sprouted because the sun can yeah. only shine light on that thing for a couple hours a day. But somehow nature, nature thrives. Right. But, uh, I, it must get some decent water in that kind of oh, slot sure. canyon there. But yeah, the sunlight, it's just so shadowed. But it just grew straight up yeah. between those cliffs. And that tree is still there. I mean, it's like the trail was exactly how we remembered and it. It's to hilarious. The so there's like a little picnic spot, a little log that's kind of in a, 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 an enclave. A little enclave. enclave. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's where we sat and had snacks years and years and years ago. And there's this little chipmunk that was, you know, did little cute little <laughs> tricks and bagged and rah rah. We didn't feed it. You're but not, it definitely yeah. had been fed before. It had. <laughs> it knew how to please. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I was, I was joking with Marissa. I said, oh, notice that bench where that little chipmunk used to be. And this is now probably a trait that has been passed on from generations in the chipmunk village because it could not have been the same chipmunk. But there was a gentleman sitting there and a little chipmunk doing cute little things and getting up, like, next to a foot to him. And, you yep. know, I was just like, this is... He was like the Instagram chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, it was like deja vu. This is just, yeah. it's, you know, everything we did. It was so weird because seven years, it's a pretty long time. Yeah. To feel like nothing had changed. Like, even the chipmunk is the same. Like, yeah. everything 
was exactly the same. It was such a cool experience and to kind of go through time like that. Just a beautiful landscape. Yes. And I, I took pictures of some of the same trees that had like kind of fallen at an angle. And I remembered it from seven years ago. Yeah. You know, I haven't looked at that picture since the, you know, the time I looked at my, my viewfinder. It looks like Oz, right? Like this whole place is like Oz. Yeah. It's just so such a crazy landscape like if episodes of Star Trek where they land on a, yeah. an alien planet and search around you know, like, <laughs> that's Yeah, we were this searching place. for aliens. It's such a weird like the formations of the rocks. So they're called hoodoos. These pinnacles of rocks and they're formed uh, kind of like the Goblin Valley that yeah. we went and saw. They uh, first you have these differences in temperatures and the ice and the snow and the it's water and wedging. the wind. Yeah, it, it wedges uh, holes and sometimes windows between the rocks. Well, and the then water gets in between the rocks and then when it freezes at night, it expands and that's oh. what frost wedging is. I read the plaque. That's not something oh. that I just knew. <laughs> from childhood. It was pretty good. But, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, and so, you know, that's how the erosion process is uh, expedited there yeah. in the Bryce Canyon. But, and I uh, don't know who named them Hoodoos, but that's a great name. Like, yeah. gotta keep it. It's just fantastic. For Hoodoos sure. everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cityscape. Hoodoos. And some of them have names. Some of them... Thor's Hammer. Yeah. It's like this big one with a, like a large rock on it, you know. I think there's like three sisters. And yeah. Sometimes they look like people. I'm sure when it's dusk there um, and the skies start to get dark and you get these hoodoo silhouettes against the sky, yeah. I'm sure you could imagine them as being some weird priests from another time. <laughs> and we're motorcyclists, so we'd rarely, I mean, in Peru and such, we found snow, but we would never hunt down Bryce Canyon in winter. But I've seen winter landscape oh, pictures yeah, of it, beautiful. and it's just fantastic. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's a bad season to, to, to hike around Bryce. That's right. Now, it was very crowded when we were there. <laughs> <laughs> Very popular destination. It was the summer, so yeah. or into the fall. Uh, people were having the time of their life, but we were lucky that we were able to park. We were really lucky to be on the motorcycle yeah. because they let us park by a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> because they're, I mean, the parking lots. They closed lots the were parking lot, so they'll be like full. And you just ride up to like the the little parking lot attendant and it's like, yeah, I'm on a please. bike. I can sneak <laughs> yeah. it anywhere. You know, I can take Two it down the trail. Two people on a bike. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they were very generous about that and we were able to go to the places that we wanted to go to. Oh, no, I didn't. I should. It's the friendliest. This is the one that talked to Edgar Allan Poe. Right? Never more. Never more. Yeah. And after our hiking around, it was already such a fantastic day. I didn't think anything could get better, but we were going to, from there, go to our dear friends, Dana and Bill's house in Southern Utah. So we were really excited about that. And the last time we'd gone between Bryce Canyon and their place, we just took a normal road and we thought we'd do the same this time. And someone on our way out said, oh, you gotta go through this duck creek canyon area it's really pretty you might as well and we thought okay we'll just take this other road it doesn't really add any time and it was great the sun was setting and there is this canyon with like white mountains and cliffs and you're going along the river and it was a beautiful yeah. drive <laughs>
And, you know, Dana, I mean, there's a lot of people who have helped us out on the road and invited us in. First time Dana called us, we were camping at a Colab Reservoir in Utah, and it just rained on us for days and days and days. Uh, and she yeah. had invited us to stay at her house when we met her in a parking lot, and we thought we were self-sufficient. But... <laughs> You know, and we, we really hadn't relied on others yeah. up until that point. But and after just three days of getting stormed on, we called her up, and uh, our lives are now intertwined. And yes. she is awesome. She came to, to our, our wedding, wedding. You know, know, so just just goes to show the people that we've met on the road. You know, they're they're near and dear to us in our heart. Yes. They're fantastic. And they make people. the journey. It definitely, and we thank each and every one of you for for riding along with us. So we we got back to Dana and. <laughs> so our home away from home. They're like it an is, aunt and uncle that yeah, I, like completely. I didn't realize I had, but our personalities are just as quirky and weird. And, yes. <laughs> you know, just great, great people. On our way over there, um, you were remembering things and uh, from our last time being there. And you said to me, I think there's like a big statue of a buffalo coming up. And a I buffalo like, silhouette, one of those what? big ones you see on like the highway or something. And I, I had no recollection of this whatsoever. I'm like, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, oh. there's no way. So I bet you. You just hold on tight <laughs> like, there, there's buddy. There's a lot of horses out there, but and cows, but like a big silhouette of a buffalo, like just randomly. And I was sure right. enough, <laughs> was your old one. memory here, guys. Damn. <laughs> There's that silhouette of a buffalo. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. How, how did you remember that? And you remember like what side of the road it was going to be on? And just to be clear, Marissa's memory. Is, and my memory is not very good. It's not very good. <laughs> I remember some things, but no. I did not remember that. But buffalo. she's always quite impressed when I remember stupid details from, <laughs> from our past. Yes. But. but to be also fair, again, I'm in the back, and so I have this big helmet like right in front of my view. So things pass me very quickly from the side, like. Whoo, like, he had a lot more time to see this buffalo silhouette coming. <laughs> this is true. It was just a, a good time hanging out with old friends and reminiscing. Yeah. We got some work done, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was good to take a break after being on the road. That's right, because we had our next expo coming right yes. up. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. And we will be seeing you next time where we go to that expo, the biggest expo of all West. the Overland Expos, Homecoming. and we check out an ancient dinosaur forest. Dun, dun, dun. Thanks everybody. Bye. Peace.